أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ما كان للنبي والذين آمنوا أن يستغفروا للمشركين ولو كانوا أولي قربا من بعد ما تبين لهم أنهم أصحاب الجحيم Today I chose an ayah 113 of Surah At-Tawbah only to illustrate a common misconception uh, and really a dangerous attitude towards reading the Quran without understanding context, without understanding when and where Allah said something, we can jump to conclusions and really derive what we're not conclude what we're not supposed to. The literal translation of the ayah and you'll see why it, somebody can get the wrong idea. It is not becoming of the prophet or of the believing community those who believe that they should seek forgiveness for those who commit shirk, those who commit idolatry, meaning the non-Muslims of the time. Even if they were close family members, you shouldn't be asking forgiveness for them. Even after it has been made clear to them that these are uh, the people of hellfire. Now, when you read that, I like, okay, well, you're not supposed to make dua for anybody who's a mushrik because they're people of hellfire. The ayah says clearly, you're not supposed to do that because it's been made clear that they're going to help. Here's the context. Rasulullah was preaching to the same group of people for well over a decade in Mecca. He engaged with them, you know, even after moving to Medina. And eventually, Allah closed the doors for the Prophet to make dua for these people. As a matter of fact, when he was in Mecca, he used to pray for them regularly and pray for them all the time. Also, all prophets prayed for their people, all prophets, and even prayed for the enemies at the time when they were doing da'wah. It is actually at the end when Allah closes that door for those people and says, no more can you pray for these specific individuals. I have highlighted them to you as enemies. Like for example, in the case of Abu Lahab, who happens to be the Prophet's uncle, so he qualifies as Uli Qurba from the people of close relations. Abu Lahab, the Prophet's uncle, cursed the Prophet ﷺ, hated on him and all of this. And the Prophet ﷺ would still not hate him back and actually still pray for him until the ayat came that basically condemned Abu Lahab for eternity. What that means for us practically then is, you are absolutely supposed to make dua. If, you, if you're a Muslim and you have Hindu family, you have Christian family, you have Jewish family, you have atheist family, make dua for them, absolutely. It's not been made clear to you that they are people of hellfire. What are you talking about? That verdict comes from Allah and it could only have come at the time of the Prophet because revelation was still continuing. Nobody's revealing to you that somebody's heart is never going to change. The knower of all the hearts no longer sends revelation to you and me about the nature of other people's hearts. That chapter has forever been closed. Which is why even the next ayah is about Ibrahim السلام, who used to pray for his father until the time came where Allah told him to stop. Revelation had to come and tell him to stop, otherwise he didn't stop praying for him. So for those of us that, and especially this holds particularly true for those of our ancestors, or not ancestors, those of our relatives and friends that are alive. Those who are dead, that's another story, that's a, that's a different circumstance. But those who are alive, they are supposed to be in our du'as. We, we pray for the guidance of our parents who aren't Muslim, or even Muslim parents who are, who've gone far away from their deen, and our siblings and others. So you're supposed to engage in, the, in those du'as for them. So make du'a for your non-Muslim friends. Make du'a for the guidance of you know, your non-Muslim family members. And include them in your prayers. And ask for the good of this life and the next life for them. May Allah Azza wa Jal guide everyone and all of our loved ones to this deen. And may Allah Azza wa Jal accept the du'as that we make along with the ibadat, the worship that we're doing. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.